Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm responding to a cardiologist on TikTok who said that eggs are phenomenally healthy and that cholesterol in all foods is good for you. He also is another person telling you to eat raw dairy. So of course, by the time the video landed on my For You page, it had over a million views and many commenters rejoiced, like this one saying that he's gonna have a milkshake after his steak and eggs dinner. 3,000 likes. And eggs are phenomenally healthy. Don't worry about the cholesterol in eggs or any other food. But it gets worse because he says that the real villain is actually oatmeal. Yes, he comes after oatmeal. Oatmeal is for, for horses, maybe, probably not even for horses. And nobody comes after oatmeal, so we're gonna cover a ton of research on oatmeal, of course, research is something that he does not use in the video. So many reasons here for a rebuttal, and here he is with his video format of five things he wouldn't do as a cardiologist. Here he is on number one. Number one, tell people to avoid eggs. Big, big, big mistake. Eggs are a cocoon for a baby chicken. It's like a multivitamin. I didn't know I was a baby chicken. I need to check my birth certificate. Is my driver's license even valid? And eggs are phenomenally healthy. Don't worry about the cholesterol in eggs or any other food. Yes, he just said all of that without citing any research. And this is where we have the problem of credentials. I think it's great for people to go to school and get the proper credentials to practice medicine and things like that. But just solely relying on credentials and not showing research can be problematic as well. Cardiologists like other doctors receive, you know, less than 24 hours of nutritional training. And it's just a hierarchy of scientific evidence thing. Looking at the pyramid, the bottom, is expert opinion, and that includes usually written opinions with research backing them as opposed to somebody just saying something in a video on social media. But enough talking about research, let's actually get to some. We have this study on 500,000 people from 2021 that looked at egg consumption and cholesterol intake as well as death from different causes. And quote, in this study, intakes of egg and cholesterol were associated with higher all-cause cardiovascular disease and cancer mortality. 300 milligrams of cholesterol which is what's in an egg roughly, was associated with a 19, 16, and 24% higher all-cause cardiovascular disease and cancer mortality, respectively. And I've shown this study before, which looked at egg consumption in egg yolk years and correlated that to atherosclerosis. And we can see that the more egg yolk years that somebody has, the exponentially higher atherosclerosis they have, similar to the relationship with cigarettes, but about two thirds as powerful. But as for this cardiologist, it was unclear to me whether he thought that cholesterol in eggs just didn't raise cholesterol, and it was kind of denying that, but still thought high cholesterol was unhealthy. No, it is the case that he doesn't even view high cholesterol levels as unhealthy, as you can see from the comments. But he responded to someone saying that they lowered their cholesterol with oatmeal by saying, why would you want to lower your number? And then he cites the APOB to A ratio as what really determines risk. This ratio really needs a whole video to fully cover, but let's dive into it a little bit and break it down. Well, we have APOB or B100, which is the main component of LDL or bad cholesterol, so B for bad. And then we have APOA, which is APOA1, which is the main component of HDL, known as good cholesterol. So A is maybe for all right, bad over all right. So in a way, this is a bit like an LDL over HDL ratio, except it's looking at more specific measures, saying it's looking at a more atherogenic specific part of LDL and claims to look at the most effective part of HDL that clears bad stuff. And he didn't cite anything saying that eggs help this ratio out at all. So I had to dig deep into the research and I landed on a study which is gonna give us quite a few answers and that is this quite massive meta-analysis of over 60 randomized controlled trials without direct industry funding, though I'm sure there's some industry studies in there. Even with that, it did find that LDL or bad cholesterol was raised by eggs, quote, 53 included studies evaluated serum HDLC and overall analysis demonstrated that egg consumption significantly increased LDL. And this forest plot is pretty damning, where any diamond to the right of that middle line represents an increased risk. And even papers like this, which claim that an APOB to A ratio is a great index for risk, say that, quote, LDL plays a causal role in atherogenesis. 
Also mentioning that HDL doesn't play a causal role, which we're not gonna mess with. And of course that's in line with the European Society of Cardiology, which I reference quite often, also claiming that LDL is causal to atherosclerosis and that lowering LDL helps with outcomes. But back to that meta-analysis of randomized control trials, they also looked at egg consumption and APOB and APOA independently. And this is where it gets really bad for his claims because while it did raise both of them, it raised APOB, the bad one, about twice as much as eggs increased as the good one, APOA, which means as more eggs are consumed, the bad part will go up higher and the ratio will get worse. That's just mathematically how it'll work. And there's this chart, albeit zoomed in way too far, sorry for that. It's on APOB, that bad atherogenic component of LDL. As eggs per day eaten increases, it rises. And so it's absolutely no surprise from this study that of all of the biomarkers for heart disease that they looked at, the APOB to A ratio was just most correlated with LDL, that bad cholesterol. So LDL definitely still valid. Cholesterol is healthy. Don't believe the propaganda. I think he says the word propaganda like 20 times in this video. And when you say propaganda too many times, that means you're propaganda, 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 propaganda. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine quite recently published this study looking at the conclusions of egg industry funded versus non egg industry funded studies. It had a lot of interesting findings, starting with the basic one that between 1960 and more recent years, the number of industry funded studies in the egg field went from 0% up to the majority of studies. Also that 85% of all of the egg studies found unfavorable cholesterol results. But this is where it gets interesting. The industry funded studies were four times as likely to wrongly report that the results were positive when they weren't. Interesting stuff. The point is the egg industry has its own share of propaganda. I mean, we do have the egg board after all, which is literally like a propaganda machine for eggs. Number two, I would never tell people to stop drinking coffee. Coffee is fantastic for cardiovascular health. I don't have a problem with this claim at all. Well, there are some mixed results on this. Yeah, there are plenty of studies like this one showing that coffee consumption is associated with lower mortality. And sadly, it's probably because coffee has been reported to be the main source of antioxidants. So uh, yeah, just eat more plants too. Number three, I would never tell people to eat oatmeal. Oatmeal is just, again, pure propaganda. The Quaker Oats Corporation, Kellogg's, Nabisco, and others. <gasps> oh my God, this actually like blew me out of my chair because yeah, people mention all these animal products are healthy all the time. We have the whole low carb movement, blah blah but no one has come this hard after oatmeal before. And even the comments were like, you lost me at the oatmeal attacks. And personally for me, this is like number one. Yeah, there's there's veganism, but oatmeal defense is, is actually my main job. Oatmeal is for, for horses, maybe. Probably not even for horses. It's not really for human consumption. We do not eat, need it. It's not part of our ancestral diet, hunter-gatherer diet, all propaganda, don't believe it. Oh my God, but, but can I eat it as a baby chicken? Okay, first of all, I didn't mention any research. He didn't even mention any negative health effects in particular of oatmeal. He just like vaguely attacked it, probably because research again and again shows the positive effects, which we'll get into in a second. But first this whole like ancestral diet thing, kind of, kind of wrong here because looking to this study, we can see that oats have been eaten for at least 32,000 years. So as IFL science mentions, this is quote, well before the farming revolution began around 12,000 years ago. This means that the grains are from the paleolithic era, meaning you have to eat oats if you're on a paleo diet. But really this doesn't matter at all because it's just an appeal to nature fallacy, assuming that because something is part of nature or natural diet that it is superior. That is not necessarily the case as there are a million examples for simply, should we stop using stainless steel during surgery because we didn't have it in ancestral times? 
obviously not. And I hope you would believe that as a cardiologist. And I will say we do have some of these like instant oats that are packed with sugar that are clearly not healthy. I don't think anybody's saying that they are. However, even with those in the mix, we see overwhelmingly positive research results for oats. From this 2022 US study on heart disease risk, oatmeal was most associated with lower risk of heart disease of any of the grains at 21% lower. And from this 2022 randomized control trial on gut microbiome and oatmeal, the oatmeal group had several improvements over the control group, such as increase in gut diversity and a 13% lowering in LDL levels, again, causally linked to atherosclerosis. Good for the heart. Another interesting one, they saw about a 20% increase in the blood antioxidant capacity in the oat eaters. So yeah, awesome for heart disease as well. And for LDL, yeah, I know he's maybe denying that higher cholesterol levels in any sense are bad. So what about actual heart attacks? Would that convince you maybe at all? Well, from this Danish study on various whole grains, for each 25 gram increase in oatmeal consumption, they found a 10 to 20% reduction in heart attack risk, depending on the model. And I will say that lower 10% reduction was with a model that also adjusted for cholesterol levels, which appear to be lowered from oats, so not a fair adjustment. And they do say that the finding is backed by some experimental studies as well. So yeah, a pretty strong message here that more oats equals lower heart disease risk. Whoa, this is a strong message. And what about just dying? I think that's also a good thing. Well, from this 2019 meta-analysis, we can see that higher oats were associated with a 12% reduction in all-cause mortality. Looking pretty good for oats. I'm almost done here, I swear, looking to the last study, which is this one, which is a 2019 study on women and breast cancer. Quote, a high pre-diagnostic intake of oatmeal slash muesli, which is of course made of oats, was associated with lower all-cause mortality by 24%. They also looked at dairy and found that, quote, a generally high intake of cheese was associated with a higher recurrence rate. We'll get to dairy in a bit, but Back to the main point is that this cardiologist, fardiologist, is that appropriate, is just wrong about oats. He's telling you to stop eating what is one of the healthiest foods for your heart out there in the American diet. Number four, I would never tell people to go low fat. Fat is super healthy, polyunsaturated fats, seafood, animal products, eggs, even raw dairy is a fantastic source of fat. I feel like I'm having to respond to raw dairy claims almost every video now, this is not good. I have to mention the infection risk first. At least three people have died from foodborne infections directly by consuming raw milk in the US. And according to the CDC, it has about 840 times the risk of infection compared to pasteurized milk, but either one has a high saturated fat level. And from you know 395 controlled feeding trials that aren't even legal to do anymore, but they're just the best way of looking at it, that saturated fat increases and so does cholesterol. Again, LDL causally linked to heart disease. But all this is really funny because he's telling you not to eat oats because they're not part of our ancestral diet. 32,000 years back, at least, we were eating them. And then dairy, widely accepted to not have been eaten until about 10,000 years ago. So oats are three times more ancestral than this dairy that you're telling people to eat. Logic destroyed. <laughs> anyway, next one. And number five, I would never tell people to see a traditional doctor who's not looking for the cause. I don't think this really merits a lengthy response. The problem I foresee here is that he's just scaring people away from any quote mainstream cardiologist in general, which would still be useful to go to. And it's really probably just a ploy to pivot people to their practice saying, I'm looking for the cause. And that's really the whole purpose of this TikTok account anyway. It's a business's account. But just because he's searching for a cause doesn't mean he didn't look in the completely wrong place and come to the completely wrong conclusion about it, which he clearly did in most cases. But in the end, I think this is really unfortunate because people have heard this message, this good news about their bad habits and responded with, again, a million views, probably a lot of engagement, a lot of people being happy to hear that they can have that milkshake after their steak and eggs dinner. But this is another reason why it's not enough to just lean on credentials of being a cardiologist. You've gotta share where you are getting your research from or any research at all. 
And yeah, most importantly, LDL raises the risk of heart disease and eggs raise LDL. I showed you that large meta-analysis of randomized control trials. You know, we're talking top of the evidence pyramid here and even playing by his rules on saying it has to be that ratio. Yeah, the APOB to A ratio appears to get worse as you eat more eggs because that B rises twice as fast as the A. And eggs just raise the B period, which is the atherogenic component of LDL. I mean, this is not good advice. And finally, oatmeal is the hero of this story. It is the unsung hero of the Western diet because it's probably preventing a lot of deaths for people that are even still eating it at all. I don't care if it was just discovered 100 years ago. It's really healthy and it lowers mortality risk. All right, let me know down below what you put on your oatmeal. We can crowdsource the best bowl of oatmeal possible. Anyway, let me know also what you thought about this guy's claims and feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Support me on Patreon if you would like to, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.